So my name is Enida Bogdani. I am from Tirana, Albania, and here I represent a LGBT organization called Pink Embassy slash LGBT Pro Albania. Um, if I have ever become an activist, it's like a large notion, but I guess I do fight for LGBT rights are human rights. So it's not like a reason why I have become an activist or if I am an activist. Um, it's more like I know when something is not right and what is my power to change it and what is, my, what, what is within me to do something right. Or to, 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 so to have respect for human rights within my own country and more if I can. So this is how I became an activist <laughs> with the desire to or how I got involved in the whole issue with the desire to have respect for human rights in my country and in this specific moment is LGBT rights but I have worked on other rights um, like children and maybe women as well so it's not that I see my, my focus in only one area it's just a matter of experience then and of time if you become more familiar with some groups of people than with some other groups of people My organization works with uh, strategic litigation, you could call them. So it works with the law or the legal basis, and it works as well with the uh, community. So it works both on theory and practice, let's say. Um, the legal uh, aspect in Albania, or the legal field, is pretty much okay, because we have a law for protection uh, from discrimination even discrimination based on uh, sexual orientation or gender identity. And this law is trying to be incorporated in the family code, in the uh, labor code, in the penal code as well. Our constitution is, it guarantees a lot of freedom, but it's very broad, it's not specific. So um, this is the legal framework, let's say and the institutional framework, which in, th in theory and what, what they say, they're very cooperative. We don't have cases of like um, extreme violence or like extreme not cooperation. But we, I'm talking only about the cases we know. So we always assume there are a lot of cases that would never come to the surface. Because uh, Albania is a small community it's a, a, a culture that is not used to have, or it's accustomed to think that everybody is the same, so meaning the same, meaning we don't um, accept or expect sexual diversity within our society. So LGBT people are not really accepted in, in like the broad community. It, it might be that smaller groups and in families it is okay, they are accepted, they have their lives, like in very small groups, but then they are afraid if the rest of the people will accept them or not, or will like uh, use the fact that they are LGBT or IQ against them. So we don't have people who are publicly out, who, who like live their life like hold hands or like present their same-sex partner or like adopt and people like people, like the broad community knows about them, because you'd be like a circus. People would look at you like, oh. <laughs> so that's pretty much the situation. We have a community, let's say, that is not empowered, or it's not, does not feel safe to be um, him or he, herself. And we have a state who says, it's okay, you can come out, like wherever you are, come out. But everyone feels that they're not really keeping their promise. So that if something would happen, if something really would happen, if someone would get fired because it's LGBTIQ, then we'd have a huge fight within the institutions and staff to get his or her right. Although we might get it because we do have the legal basis for that. And it's a matter of how much people 
want to claim their rights. So many citizens, not only for LGBTIQ issues, feel like they cannot claim their rights. So if the bill of the electricity is too high, they wouldn't go and check if, like, is this for real? Uh, if something happens, no one would go and ask the uh, institution who is in charge, like, is this right or is this not right? Like, what are you doing with my rights? And if you are an LGBTIQ person, it's add to it. So you don't trust the Albanian government anyways. The situation is bad anyway, so you have all of these problems. And on top of that, you are a person who is not recognized as a minority or as marginalized and it is not recognized for his or her human rights as everyone else. So that's pretty much the situation explained in, in small We had interesting cases because uh, once you're right, you're, we have uh, human rights reports, so we collect, we collect uh, cases of human rights that have been violated due to their sexual orientation or gender identity. And once their rights or they are aware that the, your rights are being infringed, like would be like your right to assembly, your right to have a job, or like could be like very basic rights, but they are violated because you're an LGBTIQ person. Once somebody's rights have been violated, then they become aware. But before of that, <coughs> most people want the freedom to like just party and go around. So what we have done is, for instance, <coughs> we have a very good collaboration with the institution of the Commissioner for Protection Against Discrimination who enforces the law of protection against discrimination, who uh, complies the gender identity and sexual orientation. And uh, we made a booklet, like a very small, colorful booklet, who would like, uh, tell you like that these are your rights and you can always um, demand them. So we did a training with that booklet and we have spread it as much as we can and in every meeting we do... Uh, every meeting with the community, we do bring up this. This is on our website as well. But the majority of cases would just run to our office and demand for us to go to the commissioner. They wouldn't go themselves. And there is a minority of cases who would just be informed about this. They would never meet any of us, like any of our office, would just go to the commissioner immediately. So there are these tools. Um, and then, besides that, we do weekly events with the uh, community uh, on various topics, on various discussions from like how to demand your right, how protected are you, what can you do if you're not protected, and all of these issues in our order to like get them over the board of like being invisible and wanted to be invisible forever. Uh, some people, some people have asked our help in the coming out process, but the coming out process where is the process where you um, stay, say like if you are an LGBTIQ person and it's a very complicated and complex pro process when you go through with your family. Because families generally don't expect their children to be LGBTIQ. They expect them to be the heteronormative, normal, well, normal children. So they asked our help. Although we don't like offer, per se, psych psychological or legal uh, support, we have done that as well uh, through other professionals, because none of our staff members is a professional psychologist or professional lawyers. But uh, we, we try not to interfere into the personal life of people because <clears throat> coming out is very, 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 very personal and very intimate. So like one, like is one family and is one uh, friendship, it's not the rest of them. But however, some of the, especially the young ones, uh, through coming to our offices through like a whole three year, they have taken the courage through a lot of discussion and like group sessions and peer education and mentorship groups, they have come to the point that they have gone through the coming out process with their families easier. So that's something else we do as well. Uh, we try to reach outside of 
Tirana as well, because our office is based in Tirana. And we try to uh, reach outside of Tirana in like very remote places through technical means, I'd guess, like through Facebook or phone. Uh, but it's difficult as well because if you are living in a rural area, you feel like you belong to nowhere because everything is based in like the big cities and all the services are in the big cities. So we do have a bit of that like problem as well. Um, what else do we do? Uh, what, what, what was called Pride by the mass media mass uh, press, it was the festival of diversity who was organized only by Pink Embassy, while the Pride Committee is set up by the three uh, LGBT organizations in Albania. So it's not only us, there are two more. And it was called uh, a Pride because um, uh, one of our... Uh, uh, said that it would be like a parade of the flag because that would be the first fla the first time that like an LGBT flag would be in like a public space visible to everyone but it was for Idaho Day in 2012 it was not the pride but the media called it pride and everybody thought it was a pride <laughs> so a, a pride parade like you have to have the, the walk of pride like to be proud of your of who you are and we didn't do that we just had like a, a very nice setup what we did last year and it was only pink embassy while what we want to organize for the pride it's um, a whole week of uh, of events with the, of the LGBT movement in Albania, so not only Pink Embassy, because on, uh, on Idaho is more intimate for organizations, like everyone thinks that wants to do something, could be like a graffiti, could be a walk, whatever, whilst the Pride is like a statement. It's always a political, almost always a political statement as well. So we want to be all of the organizations together and take on board other uh, uh, human rights and other rights organizations, Albanian organizations as well. So uh, we're having like, um, we have set a committee and a working group who's taking care of that all the time so through our daily work. We do meet um, at least once in two weeks or something with the other two organizations as well to set up the whole scenario for a pride although like Tirana pride would be relatively late for, for Tirana because in 2013 it's like more a matter of when people or like when the movement thought it would be okay to go for a pride now because as I said um, Albanians in general have a problem in demanding their rights and a pride is like a very powerful tool of demanding your rights. Lately, lately, I would say for the last couple of years, Albanians and some of them have been demanding their rights through like going to the street and through occupying the public space and through making it very certain that we are here and we are for this. So in a country that this is not part of the mentality like that you demand, a pride in 2013, it's still okay. And there's still some debates if it's early, if it's not early, especially after what happened in, in Belgrade and what happened in Split and like what will happen in Skopje. But we came to a mutual agreement that we would give it a try. And we actually think, or my maybe worst personal fear is that there would be no problem but that there will be a lot of community members who still not know about it. Because there is this, like... Um, I guess it's a little bit in every country that the movement and the community are not always on the same level, the LGBTIQ community, because not necessarily everyone who's LGBTIQ identifies with the activist or the movement who's fighting for their rights. They just want to be regular citizens. It doesn't matter of, like whom they sleep with or who they love. So there is always this problem, but definitely the Pride is happening in September. It's actually a day after my birthday. So <laughs> it's September 21. If we, if we make it, I'm saying not that we have any doubt, but we need to get like the logistics right. We have come down to, um, I think we're at the part we're looking for a budget.
Ja. I actually was in the Belgrade Pride in 2012 as like uh, supporting them and as like trying to uh, gain some experience because we already knew that we were going to organize the Pride. I haven't been to Split or to the Skopje Pride, but um, I think what is an advantage in the Albanian community is, again, our apathy as citizens. And uh, because of our Prime Minister has taken very seriously uh, EU accession, and one of the uh, one of the twelve recommendations that we got from the EU Commission, the eleventh one, is about human rights and LGBT rights in specific. So our government is very pro into being very human rights friendly, and they I think they would give every police force they have. So I, I guess in terms of that, even though in, in, in Belgrade, when I personally was there, it was like magnificent how the police were like securing us, although scary, but still they were like securing the people. I don't think, uh, even though we are in the region, Albanians do not care that much as the Serbians or the Croatians or the Macedonians. They don't have this strong identity about what they what they mean uh, on I doubt in 2012 next to us like next to us around the corner we had the Muslim Albanian community which I don't want to get into numbers but Albania largely is not a practicing religious country so we had the Muslim community who were protesting against the like there was a peaceful protest, they were out with like some slogans saying that the LGBTIQ community is a threat to family and reproduction. And we had no clashes. But um, the other organization who organized something for the Daho Day did have only one incident. There were uh, like some people riding with the bicycles, they called it like the ride for freedom or uh, something like that. And somebody like threw a firework at them. But as it was said, it was more a matter of logistics of the police. Uh, we were protesting uh, all the three staff of the three organizations, so around 15 people. We were protesting in front of the Macedonian embassy in Tirana for what they did when the Macedonian um, office in Alg uh, or the Macedonian uh, the Skopje office of LGBT United, I think, and I don't remember very well their name. It's an LGBT organization based in Skopje. It was uh, assaulted, I think, or like something happened, and the government did nothing. So we were protesting in front of the Macedonian embassy, and everything went okay. When, when all the activists went to go to a cafe, we got attacked. It was really not an attack, but he, he wanted to attack us. It was only one person who also could be Muslim, he didn't really say. He just like spit on two of the women and then we cornered him and then the police came. So there have been these very little cases of incidents. But we, um, we're we working very much into like how to come across this pride to the public and to the LGBTIQ community at the same time. And from my understanding and from our risk analysis, although we do have a risk analysis and we do have a, a program of, of, of security for the pride, um, I don't think it will be the same situation because generally like the Albanians don't have such a strong identity and don't have like affirmative need to go and like go somewhere to... to, to, to fight for it. it. Like Kosovo has a problem lately with the religious communities as well. So um, one of the offices of the LGBT organization in Pristina was attacked as well. And not because of the LGBT, it was because of Kosovo 2.0, because of the sex issue of their magazine. And we don't have this kind of cases in, in, in Albania. We had one case, we have only one person in history who actually came out in public. He was part of this reality show Big Brother when you put in some play in like 
a house and you're monitored and it's like a TV reality show or whatever it's called. He did say that he was gay to like get win or sympathy. And then people in his hometown, because he's from the north, were protesting against him while he was in. So sure, we are a homophobic culture, but we don't take action on our homophobia, I would say. So we're pretty confident, let's say like 80% confident <laughs> that, that, that it will work with no incidents. Beside the fact that we are in touch with our colleagues from uh, Split, uh, Belgrade, uh, Pristina and Skopje um, in order to avoid all possible incidents, if it's possible. Because like all people have said here, when you're targeted, you're targeted. Like you cannot avoid the impossible. But we have a security plan and we'll have uh, security measures as well and a very good media plan. So to like work with the public, with the LGBTI community, with the institutions and to have like a smooth pride. It's a lot of people working on this. I think we're like uh, 15 only the organizations and we'll get more people into working. So I think we're all set. I don't have to say good luck. <laughs> we need luck. <laughs> we need luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you as well.